G'day, it's Mike from Battlefield Accessories um, and this is the construction video for our latest addition to the range which is the um, American Civil War Union Ironclad or City Class Ironclad gunboat. Now I'm going to say this probably later on in the video. It's in the style of the City Class gunboat. A 1 to 50 scale representation of this gunboat It's about a metre long. Right, and so we've had made that compromise between practicality um, and you know a simulation of the real thing so we kept the number of guns the same we've reduced the the actual footprint of the model so as you can see well, it's a fairly substantial size model um, again if i grab my little old glory confederate oh sorry union guy he's sitting up on the top there so it gives you a sense of scale um, comes complete now not model this is our pre-production version the um, Real version comes with 13 um, half barrel um, white metal guns, which basically will populate all the gun ports around the model. Um, we think it's a really great kit. Uh, and putting it together is about sort of 30 minutes, 45 minutes. Um, this video will actually take you through that. So um, please come and visit us at www.battlefieldaccessories.com.au. Um, or come along and join our Facebook group. Um, our Facebook group is a great place where uh, we sort of share ideas and look at new models that we're putting together. We also do requests. Um, so um, come and join us. See ya. Okay, so a few logistics before we kick off. Some things that are always useful to have when you're constructing MDF models. Old paintbrush. Some PVA glue. Um, if you've watched one of my videos before, you'll know that I like to use um, a quick dry, a quick set, I well, call it fast bonding here, uh, PVA glue. Some masking tape is always handy. Um, sometimes a sharp knife might be useful as well. Okay, so this video is going to show you how to put together our um, City Class um, Union Ironclad Gunboat. Um, one of the things that you need to bear in mind when you're looking at this kit is that it's a, in the style of rather than a direct one-to-one -one or in-scale representation. If it was an in-scale representation, the real thing would be about a meter and a half long, which is probably a bit big for most average wargamers' um, tastes. So within your kit, you'll get a base. Right? It's about 48 centimeters long. Okay, It's got pegs um, and a little bit of engraving on the surface. That's the upside of that. You'll see with a lot of these kits, you get um, the odd tag hasn't punched through again any of you are paintbrush there just to push those through um, good idea to get those out before you start building the model um, because otherwise it might cause you a little bit of stress as you're working and they should all come through nice and easily the other way they often do this is just give it a smart tap right, and that will push most of those through okay so we have a base, then we have a, a series of additional pieces, and I'm just going to run through them in no particular order. Right, there's this piece here which has some ladders and a front and rear deck piece. The wheelhouse that sits on top with its supports. Two lots of these which are the supports for the armour plating sides. Right. These strange things will make the chimney sacks, you have two of those. Two rowboats, the armoured cover for the paddle wheel at the back of the uh, model. These weird looking things here which are gun supports and I'll show those a little bit later. Two front and rear panels. Now, the trick with this is the front of the gunboat has three forward firing guns, the rear only has two. So this is the front, this is the back. Just in case you're not sure on the ship model, the pointy end is the front. Right, and then two sides. Um, the trick with these sides is that the four gun ports are towards the front of the vessel. So it's basically going to sit like this. Right, so I'm going to have these four and then the front with its three are going to be there. If you think about it like this, this area at the back here is where all the machinery and the paddle wheel is so there's no room for guns. Right, and then finally, upper deck.
Okay, to start with, I'm going to punch out all of these um, side supports. So these are these things that look a bit like this. Now each of these has uh, one or two little tags that basically hold it on down the bottom. So you just need to push push them out carefully. Um, they should come as you see. I'm just pushing my fingernail on that. Right, it should break off pretty easily. You can feel that give there. Just getting them out square is going to be the trick. So as I can show you there, as you can see, these are the uh, what's and all version of the videos where some things come out easily and some things don't. So these little bits are left in the sprue. It act, sometimes is useful to actually break all those off. And if I see them, look at the back, you can see those bits. These bits all actually can be removed. So you can actually pull them out and snap them off if you wanted to. So I'll just do that now. Good idea to have a bin handy because you're going to generate a little bit of excess stuff that you're going to want to throw away. Again, if you're working on the kitchen bench at home, can I strongly suggest that you put yourself a tablecloth or something down? Because it's a good way to lose a whole pile of leaf passes is to leave PVA glue smeared all over the kitchen table. Now, should have, there, should, there should be 12 of these pieces that I'm punching out now, and I'll show you exactly what they look like okay there, there's those ones done so you have a set of pieces with this long neck on them right? now this basically that little hook there is where the deck's going to sit and this forms part of the um, upper balustrade at the top there's another set of these which I'll lay my hands on now which don't have that piece at the top now they are for the front and rear of the vessel. So you should have 12 of these ones with the spike and four of these ones without front sides. Probably best to keep those aside, like separated so you don't accidentally put them in the wrong place. The whole kit is fairly over-engineered, so if you missed one of these, it wouldn't actually matter, although it might give you some small visual problems on the top. Okie dokie. I'm using my bin to get rid of all of my excess waste. Okay, so I've got my four front ones over to one side over here. I'll put them there so you can see them. My four front ones. And then all of the ones are going to go on the side here. Now, if you look across the baseboard here, you'll see that you've got these pairs of holes that come back, like this. And then you've got pairs of short holes in between them. Okay, so these ones are 5mm by 3 these are three mil square. The three mil square ones are for the guns. These long ones here are for the supports for the deck. So they're the ones we're gonna use. And the way I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna grab my glue. I'm just gonna check that I've punched out all of these little holes. Okay, so fairly straightforward. Helps if you work on a flat surface. Okay, so you can see most of it. I'm gonna come along and put a dob of glue in between the two 5mm by 3mm holes. Now of course I've broken the number one golden rule of building MDF kits, which is I should always make sure that my parts fit before I apply any glue. Okay, now these ones should fit and we're going to see whether that works. So take one of these with the sticky uppy bit, come along and place it along the side. And so what this is going to do once you're once it's finished is you're going to end up with, if you like, the ribs of your boat. So all of the ones facing out towards the side are going to go in like this. Now the slope needs to face towards the outside because if you think about the gunboat, its outer um, sides slope out towards the water. I think that makes sense. It makes sense in my head anyway. Oops. Now, make sure you keep all these together because there's nothing worse than losing one of those. So you can see I've got my ribs sitting there like that. Now I don't need to worry too much about these because even if they dry, there's a little bit of play in those which will help them um, seed into the top. Once I've got those in, I'm going to come along with my ones without the tops and I'm going to plug them into the front. All 
Right, so there you can see, I now have my framed up. Ship. Okay, probably the next thing to talk about is guns. Now the kit will come supplied, and I should have done this in the parts list, with a bunch of half size barrels like this. Now these are manufactured by Eureka Miniatures. That's www.eurekaminiatures.com.au. Um, there also is a US distributor for Eureka Miniatures. I'm not sure their web address. Um, great figure manufacturers. Nick's actually producing these. Now basically what they are is they're the, the front end of um, rifle um, artillery. right? Because in the end with the gunboat, these sides are going to be glued in place. You're not going to put figures inside it. And so these will just stick. The guns will protrude from the, um, from the gun ports. And so the idea with these is you have these little things. I'm going to punch one of these out. Now there's a trick with this. I'm just going to move this. I have a burnt side and a non-burnt side. The burnt side, that hole is just a fraction bigger than the non-burnt side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the burnt side and take my gun piece and slide it and put a bit of force behind it all the way through. So I end up with something like that. Okay, so if you can see, it's just like a freestanding gun mount. And then wherever I've got on my ship model, wherever I've got a pair of these holes, I'm going to come along and glue that in place like this. Okay. Now what that's going to do is that's going to hot sit there. And then when I put my side panel on, should get the right one. And I put this on. I'm going to end up with my gun sitting like that. And so I'll end up with a beautiful side there with the barrels protruding um, ready for action. So the kit, as I said, the kit comes supplied with 13 guns, which is what you need to actually man the whole ship. Okay. Now, the problem for me is that at the moment Nick's actually producing those for me, so I only have two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend to glue the sides on. So I'm going to show you gluing these in, right, and then I'm going to pretend to glue the sides in, and then later on before I take this uh, model to a show, I'm going to put the rest of the guns in place. So just like I did with the side, double glue, whack my mount in like that. So the trap for young players on this is to make sure that the burnt side is facing in towards the model. So I'm going to slide my gun in from the burnt side so as the unburnt side is facing towards the outside. Now you'll tell, you'll know this straight away because when you try and insert your guns, you'll find that they um, don't go in very far. If that's the case, flip it around and uh, push them a bit harder. Now, if you decided you wanted them a bit further, see I'm getting mine about three quarters of the way through. If you wanted to go almost the full way, if you just run, so yeah, I'm putting them through about that far. If you wanted them forward through even more, if you grab a scalpel or a sharp knife and carefully just do a little run around the inside of that circle, you'll clear it out a little bit more and then you can push the gun forward through even further. But as I said, that's going to be enough for me. Right, one dob. And stick that in place. Now, just for um, completeness at the moment, as I said, I'm not going to stick my sides in place, so I'm going to quickly rip around and put my other, glute, other gun mounts in. And then tomorrow when the guns actually arrive, I'm going to glue them in place. Oh, now, one of the things I should say, to give you a sense of scale, I'll just put a Union soldier down here. This will give you a sense of the size of this kit. So the, the massive is, no, the model is pretty massive. Okay. It's designed to be a centerpiece of an American Civil War game. Yeah, I'm just punching out the rest of these holes. Okay, got glue in place. I'll quickly come around and whack them all in. Again, I think I've said it 15 times. We'll say it one more time. I have the burnt side 
facing towards the interior of the model. Oops. Three guns at the front, two guns at the back. Make sure you get them straight and make sure that one's around the right way. Okay. Alrighty. So the next part of this model is to secure the top deck. And so again, what I'm going to come along here and do is I've grabbed my top deck. I'm going to make sure that I punch all of the things out so as all my holes can go through. Okay. So there are two ways that, well, there are two orientations for the top deck. So what you'll see is there's a series of 10 mil by 3 mil holes. They are the rear. So this is where the paddle wheel is going to fit. And then there are two sets of 4 mil by 3 mil holes. Right, they are where the wheelhouse is going to go. Each of these holes along the side is going to match up with one of these spikes across here. Okay. So, I mean, you can choose how long you want to wait to do this. I'm going to put mine on right now. In terms of securing it, Right, what I'm going to do is quickly put a small amount of glue under each of those tabs there. Right, and so that's once the top goes down, it'll glue in place and that'll hold things. Now because I'm going to put my guns in tomorrow, I'm actually not going to glue this, I'm just going to put it on. Okay, so there's a trick to getting these pieces on and it is not letting it slide all the way home first because if you push this end piece all the way down, then it's going to change the angle of entry of all the other holes. And so what I'm looking to do here is to line up each of them as I go, right on both sides. You'll feel that once you get a cluster of them lined up, so like these bottom four, the whole thing will start to want to slide down. Resist the urge to push it in place. Right, you've got to get all of them lined up. You can see I'm just working gently up the model. go slide it down now of course on your model you've got glue under that and that's now going to glue in place if you wanted to wait to put your side decks in then what you could do is run some masking tape around the model to hold to just to pull this together but right, that's not a bad way to go um, for me because I'm just working in my impatient way which is just going straight start to finish but I'm just going to keep going okay so you can imagine I've got my side decks here so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run glue down each of these faces. Right? Then along the top line of the sidewall and a bead across the front in front of those um, ports. Right? And then I'm going to come along with that glue everywhere right? and basically slide it up and into place. Now you hear that click into place, that is now good to go. So, got that in. Now, once I've got glue and stuff on that, again, it's useful to run a bit of masking tape maybe along the front just to hold it in place while you're working. Now, I'm going to pretend I'm doing that, which is going to hold it while I work because as you spotted, I haven't actually glued it. All the pieces. So I would advise you to do that either way. Now, in terms of the sides, I've got this lined up here and there. And again, a little bit of masking tape there won't hurt. Okay. Turn my model around. Have a go on my other side. Now, of course, remember, I'm normally going to have guns in there. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come along, line up with the guns, slide the whole thing in place. A 
bit of masking tape to hold it while the glue dries. And you see I made a rookie mistake here. Got a little punch out that I've got to push it through, push through there because I'm going to need those a little bit later on. At least watch out for those ones. Okay, then my front and rear. Now, of course, you're going to realise which way to put these because one of them's got three guns hanging out the front of it and the other one's only got two. Again, if I turn my ironclad model around, there's the front with its three guns. I'm going to come along with the front piece, slide it into place. Right, I'm going to glue around both sides. Right, again, if I pull that back out, glue, glue, glue on the front, glue on the insides of these, maybe a bit of glue across the top, plenty of glue, put it in place, mop up any excess glue with my brush, then come along with my masking tape and just secure that nicely. Now one of the things to watch when you're gluing those two side pieces in is making sure that they both line up flush with the edge of this. Right now I've actually put mine a little bit further back. This is why you do this in one sitting. Just push it forward a bit so it's nice and flush. Flip the whole model around. Go to the back. Again, same thing. Making sure that I've put plenty of glue in on these struts to support it. Drop the deck in. And again, it should be flush both sides with my model. A little bit of masking tape there. A little bit over here. Right, and we are good to go. Okay, so there in essence is the main body of your gunboat. Right, yours of course will have more guns than the two that are on my model. Okay, so extra bits and pieces. So let's, again, you can do these in any particular order because they're not dependent on each other. I'm going to start with this frame here. I'm going to punch out my three ladders. Now again, the ladders are gripping at one end. I would suggest that when you glue that into place, you can see there's the end that it's gripped on. The other end's nice and clean. So I would mount my ladders with the cut end down towards the deck. Now, the way that on the real one of these they go is at the back you have two ladders side by side something like that you could vary it up if you want to put them on the other side of the gun ports but strictly they go there and then on the front one ladder on the side something like that so slightly off centered to the middle Okay, now again, it's up to you. I would put a bit of glue on and glue them into place, but again, because I want to move my decks out later, I'm not doing that. Okay. Next thing is the front and rear um, additional bit. It's probably got a special nautical name. I don't know what it is. So there's two of these. There's this large one that's got, that matches the bow and this one which matches the stern. Okay, so I'm going to come along with my model run a bead of glue under that and then drop that in place. Now it should sit pretty close to dead on. But you might want to push it forward a little bit. It's basically a position to taste. Right, and then the same at the other end of the boat. I'm just going to come along and just whack that in place. Okay, if there's a little bit of overhang there, it doesn't hurt. It gives you the sense of the um, actual slope of the uh, ship. Okay. Next bits, I believe these are called davits, but I could be wrong. Right, this is for the two um, rowboats which are attached to the side of the vessel. Now, of course, the minute the firing started, I suspect they would have been the first thing to turn into firewood. But they're there for completeness sake. Now, again, if you were looking at a real city class ironclad, they actually have four of these. Of course, to save that meter of space, we're just going for two. Okay, so very straightforward with this. I'm going to actually glue this one in place. Let's get my tape out of the way. Right, just a tiny bit of glue on that. And that's actually way too much. I'm going to have to clean that up. 
take my davit number one and put it in. Now the keying on these means they are pretty firm, like without being hard to get in. Right, and then in terms of good etiquette for building models or MDF models, just clean off any glue that you've got. Better way to do it is probably to smother the tag in glue. And same on the other side. One. Two of those there in place. Again, coming along with my brush, a little bit of cleanup, just to make sure I haven't got any nasty glue stains later on. Okay, so they're now in place. Um, before I stick the boats on, what I'm going to do is just build the um, the superstructure things on the top of the ironclad. Now the first one is the wheel, the, yeah, the paddle wheel cover. There are one, two, three, four, five, um, if you like, pieces that cover the shape of the wheel, plus two sets of these inserts. Now the idea is this one is the outside and it gives the appearance of what it should look like. This one is hidden, it's inter internal and it provides the supports for the, uh, the top decking pieces. What I've tried to do with this kit is try to hide as many of the um, pegs as possible. So if you look at it carefully, you'll see there's very few peg marks um, protruding the surface because that's one of the banes of, um, of MDF models is having those peg marks sticking out the whole time. So what I've done is I've got the, the, the line side, I've put glue on the inside of it and on the tags. I've then taken this other piece and I'm just gonna stick that to it. So here we go. Let's do that where you can see it. So, on the outer two holes, that will go in with the stripy lines facing outwards. Right, and then, in the single hole, slide this one in. And it'll sit like that. Now, in this case, I don't care if there's a little bit, little, little bit of glue in here, because that whole central section is going to be covered by the last step in this. So, again, get on the tags, bit in the middle. So, we've got the stripy side facing out. It's going to be facing towards you guys. And then putting the internal piece in. Okay, so I'll turn this around. So it looks something like that. Then, last bit. Let's come along with some glue and run it across the intern the top of the internal bit. Something like that. Now, trick with this is you not naturally want to start at the top, but they kind of overlap with each other. So you want to work from the bottom sides up and have the top one as your last one. So you can see that it sits in. Do the same on the other side. Just wipe off any excess glue you get. And number two. it's not something you probably thought about unless you work with laser cutting a lot. Um, you can't actually do curves very easily. And so this is the attempt at a curve. It's kind of a compromise between perfectly round right, and the appearance of being round. Right, so that then sits in place like that and you have the wheel cover. Okay, so let's do the rowboats next. So two robots, they're identical. They have this piece here, which is the base. And then they basically work up as you go. Now, I would always suggest you just put these together in a pile first. So you have the base, then an open section, then an open section with the seats in it, and then finally a top piece to go on top of that. Now, how you line them up is really completely up to you. They're kind of, they're designed to kind of be a bit like the Russian dolls that they'll sit inside each other, sit inside each other with a small overlap. And so, my suggestion is that what we're going to do is work from the outside and basically a little run of glue 
and this is where actually you might be better to use your brush. So, a little pile of glue. Grab my brush. So I'm attaching this to the outside, so I'm just going to run my glue around the inside here. Because remembering, part of this outside line here is actually going to be exposed. It doesn't really make sense. I'll show you in a moment. So I'll put a smear of glue on that. Then I'm going to come along and put my boat base in. And so you can see that some of it is overlapping out. Okay, so I want to be careful with how much glue I get in there and then maybe run my brush around just to clean off anything excess in there. There's a little bit of a do it how you want to do it in this part. Um, I've avoided putting pegs and things in it because again, the minute you start doing that, then it starts to look unnatural. So again, I'm coming along. Don't put a trap for young players. Don't put glue over the middle of those seats because they don't actually attach to anything. Oh, and something I'm doing which I haven't really pointed out is I'm working upside down because how it looks on the top is going to be disconcerting because of I've got gaps that I'm looking down. Whereas if I do it from the underneath, I can see the amount of overlap on each side and make sure it's pretty even. Okay. And then finally, the top. Now, don't worry if you mess the first one of these up because you've got two of them, so you get two shots of it, which will be great. Something like that. together and then come along and just give it a final brush over and there you go it's a fairly okay rowboat now of course my final check is just make sure I haven't picked up too much glue inside just maybe give it a bit of a clean up as well okay so now there's a trick about how you actually attach these things if you are um, you know, a rigger and you're really great with all of that fine cotton thread and stuff, then you might want to rig up some sort of pulley system on here. For me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick my boat in here and I'm going to glue it right to the upper deck. All right. Or I'm going to put a blob of blue tack under there if I want to be able to pull it off later on. But in essence, it's simulating that it's attached. Okay. If I just leave it there like that, then it gets you get the idea and then I can then take it off and have my guys rowing to shore or rowing around the boat, whatever I want to do. But alternatively, I can glue it in place. Okay, and again, I could glue it to the davits, right, like this, right, or I could glue it down on the deck. Again, that's really up to taste. Um, there's enough space there that you can actually leave it in place. Okay, so two bits to go, three bits to go. So I'm not going to bother building the other boat. You get the idea of how that goes. So now we're just going to do the upper wheelhouse. And this has a consistent theme to what you've already seen. So I'm just breaking these pieces out. Same process that we use with the lower deck. It's using hidden um, supports. Okay. Now these are supports will only go in one way, so I'll just drag this down and you can see it. I'm going to come along, put a blob of glue in. One, two, three, oops, three, four. Okay, now the only trick with this bit in terms of getting it right. On the side pieces, there are two pieces like this with a long gap in it and there are two pieces like this with a short gap the short gap ones go against here the long ones because if you think about longest vision shot slot go front and rear of the of the uh, boat okay so i'm going to come along and run a bit of glue down the front of each of these this one i'm gluing for real a bit across the front 
the struts, be across the front. I'm going to come along with this, basically slide it in place. Same with one from the other side, bring it in, just push that strut back in properly. Then I'm going to take these, now again I'm not going to glue these yet, I'm just going to check that they work. Now they should be flush with the outside of those, so I've got one, two, excellent, happy with those. So I'm then just going to run a bit of glue down these two sides. Again, the trick with this is put a bead at the top and it'll let gravity do the work for you. And then a little bit across the front where the front's gonna pick it up. both pieces in and give the whole thing a little bit of a squeeze. You can see that I'm beating some glue there. I'm just going to come along and wipe that off. I'm just going to push it across a fraction so as it's nice and even. Right, there you go. Wheelhouse, more or less. Then finally the roof. Now you could, if you wanted to, model this with a removable roof. Right, which would be, don't glue this piece in, but here's the roof. I'm going to keep the lines running consistent with my deck, which is running along the length of the boat. And if you look at the pictures of this, like the um, USS Carondelet or the Cairo, um, all of this all of this is iron. I th believe that the top deck is um, timber, but the roof of that wheelhouse is all iron. Okay, so the last thing we have to do is probably the most fiddly bit of the whole thing which is the smokestacks. Now, there are a couple of options with the smokestacks. You could, if you wanted to, and you didn't want to muck around with what I'm going to do now, you could actually go get some 13 mil um, agricultural pipe right, and basically stick that to the top. That would actually work. However, in your kit, you have been provided with two smokestacks. Now, they look like this. Right, and I'm now going to set those up and show you how to stick them together. So I've got a little bit of glue handy. Right, I'm going to take this and I'm going to break these out. Now, a trick with these is I'm just pushing through here using my finger. Once I've got them out, you basically just break them all off. So the eight of these will provide the round shape of the tube. Then I've got this piece here, which is going to form a funnel top. This piece here, which is the base, it's the one with the solid center. And very carefully removing this piece, and this is where your sharp knife might come in handy. Right, this is quite delicate, and it's got one little joint, it's been tagged in the corner. Just going to come along with my knife and just ease that, just cut through that. And get that out. Now, if in the process of putting this together, this breaks, which hasn't happened to me yet, and I've put five or six of these together, but if it does, it's no great drama because you just basically piece, whack a piece of masking tape around the whole thing to hold it in place. This is the top ring. Okay, so here we go. It's going to start by again making sure any of these little um, things are pushed all the way through. So I've got a nice open ring like that. I'm going to come along with my end pieces like this, that way you can see it. Right, stick them in the glue and jam them into the thing. Oops, try and avoid doing that. So the eight of these, once you've got them in place, will actually form quite a tight circle. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bravely leave the camera running through this. So as if it's painful for me, you'll get that. Because in the end, when you buy one of these kits, you need to know what you're in for. Uh, 
Okay, so now that I've got them all bunched like that, what I'm going to do is just gently straighten them all up so as I get them to a rough circle shape. do kind of nicely. Okay, then I'm going to grab my paintbrush, I'm going to get some glue, and we're just going to put some glue around the top of this. Now this will get a little bit messy. You could, if you wanted to, do this as you were, as you were dumping, dumping the base end in, you could dump the top end in glue as well. That would get a little bit of glue on here. A few times I've done this so far, I've done it this way. Alright, now this is where I'm using my sharp knife just to position these around a bit better. Okay, so the idea is that each one of these little wedges in here, right, goes in between one of those pegs. Okay, so I'm just going to come along. My experience on this has been, the best way to do is to start with one, and then ease the other ones in. And that's where your knife can be really handy. There we go, done. Now again, a little bit of pressure on top, just stand it up to make sure it's straight. And then, final thing, is take your smokestack top, bit of glue around the underside of it, and then glue it over the top of all of those pegs. Now it's an octagon like the piece underneath it, so make sure you line it up. Doesn't matter if you don't, other than every time you look at your model forever afterwards, you'll see that it haven't lined it up and it's not working very well. Okay, now mine's got a little bit of a leaning tower of Pisa thing happening. So once I've got it all together, just make sure it's nice and straight. Then um, take those and put them. Now I haven't put a, a mark for where they go on the top. They're supposed to go just behind. Oops, you can't see it. Right, so they're supposed to go just behind the um, the wheelhouse, so somewhere in here. On my other model, I've put them back here. It's really up to you. You can put them wherever you like. Um, sorry, I'm just fixing one little piece up. So there you go. There's another smokestack to make, another boat to make, and that's the completed model. And there is one thing I've forgotten to show you. Okay, so you also have this piece lying around. Now, these bits here represent the curtain or deck edges at the top. Again, there's eight of these, I believe. And in essence, what happens is they go in here. Right, and again, you just glue them in. And they basically go all the way along the edge. Now, again, I'm not gluing mine at the moment because, oh, probably can glue them. Oh, and I'm going to want to move the, remove the top deck, so I'm not going to glue them. So they can sit basically sit in here. Now, what I've done when I've cut when I've um, cut these, I've cut them through on the back, just so as when you're looking at the reverse of them, there is some detail there because there's one of the things you know with laser is you can't engrave on both sides of the material. Um, so it's basically going to sit all the way along here. So they go this one, this one, this one, and this one, and then the boat takes up or the rowboat takes up the last little bit. So, there you have it, the, um, the um, City Class Ironclad Gunboat by Battlefield Accessories, 28mm scale. Okay, so just a final scene, this is our pre-production version. A couple of other things that I haven't mentioned. These gun, po gun ports are actually only um, connected by a tag at the top and the bottom, so they do break out really easily. The design of that is often these um, gunboats are pictured, and if I show you the front, right, they're often pictured with, say, both ports being open, top and bottom. And so you may decide for your one that you want to model something like that. And so I've made these so as they can be removed if you want to. Um, the other option you could do is you could not glue that front and rear wall in, which would then give you access inside the actual vessel. Um, I think it's probably of limited value, but again, you know, it's your model, you do with it what you want. Um, the steamer that I'm working at the moment 
is going to have removal roost because I think it's much more appropriate for that to have boarding actions and things on it. For this one, I think the boarding action is going to be on the surface, not on the internal um, guts of the actual model. So anyway, I hope you liked the video. Um, yeah, Battlefield Accessories, www.battlefieldaccessories.com.au. Thanks for watching. See ya.